From the late 18th century into the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution transformed Britain into an industrial powerhouse. This era was marked by technological advancements such as the steam engine, mechanised looms and the spinning jenny, which would dramatically increase production. The need for a large labour force grew and children with the small hands and the ability to navigate through tight spaces became an integral part of the workforce. Employers would favour children mostly because of low wages, and a child's wage was generally a fraction of an adult's, which is obviously an attractive option for any factory owners trying to maximise profits. Child labourers were typically aged between 5 and 14, although it wasn't uncommon to see younger children. Both boys and girls were used generally from poorer families who needed every bit of income they could get to survive. Where you lived would influence the type of work that was available, so for example in the north of England, mining and textile work was a lot more common. Daily life for a child was gruelling, they would wake up around 4 or 5am and work until the evening where the workday could be as much as 16 hours, with minimal breaks. As you can imagine, these long hours were not only physically exhausting, but also mentally draining. Children commonly worked 6 days a week with Sundays off. Factories were open continuously and some children would work night shifts, often referred to as double shifts, where they would work in the night and sleep in the factory during the day. Common industries included textiles, coal mines, metal works, chimney sweeps and match factories. In textile factories children had roles such as scavengers and pieces. A scavenger would crawl under machinery and pick up any loose cotton. This was obviously very dangerous and often resulted in injuries or even fatalities as they could get caught in the moving parts of the machinery. Many children suffered severe injuries such as crushed fingers or limbs and the dust and cotton fibres caused respiratory issues leading to chronic illnesses. Pieces would tie together any broken threads on the spinning machines which required constant attention and quick reflexes to avoid any accidents. This often caused repetitive strain injuries along with cuts from the sharp threads. Long hours spent in awkward positions led to skeletal issues and the constant loud noise caused hearing damage over time. In the dark and damp coal mines, children took on some of the most hazardous jobs such as trappers, hurriers and thrusters. Trappers were usually the youngest workers in the mine and their duty was to open and close the ventilation doors to manage the airflow of the mine, which would ensure that any dangerous gases didn't build up in the tunnels. Being isolated inside the dark mine would be mentally taxing and working long hours in effectively pitch black conditions would lead to psychological trauma and health issues. Hurriers and thrusters were responsible for transporting the coal to the surface. Hurriers would pull carts that were loaded with coal through the narrow mine shafts with the help of a harness that would be strapped to the shoulders and thrusters would be the ones that were pushing the carts from behind. As you can imagine, the physical demands of a job like this in general are huge. But for a child, this would be a ridiculous task and over time this would cause many injuries due to the heavier loads and difficult and awkward positions. Confined spaces and poor ventilation exposed them to respiratory diseases and the risk of cave-ins and explosions were ever present. The metalworking industry was another sector where children would face extreme dangers and difficult conditions. Assistants or apprentices would help with tasks such as carrying heavy loads of metal, operating machinery and assisting in the casting process. They would generally learn from skilled labourers the intense heat from furnaces would cause a constant risk of burns and the exposure to toxic fumes and molten metal would again cause respiratory issues, bringing long-term health problems. With heavy materials and working the machinery, injuries such as cuts and broken bones were inevitable. A well-known and iconic job for the period is that of a chimney sweep. These were called chimney boys and were often as young as four or five and the job was to climb into narrow chimneys and clean up the soot and ash. They used brushes and scrapers to remove any build-up inside the chimneys, which was essential to prevent chimney fires. The biggest problem with this job was children getting stuck in the narrow flues, which led to panic and sometimes suffocation. Similar to the other jobs, the soot would cause respiratory issues and skin issues, and the prolonged exposure to soot led to chimney sweeps cancer which is a form of scrotal cancer that was the first reported form of occupational cancer identified by a gentleman 
named Percival Pott in 1775. Pott was a surgeon who demonstrated that cancer may be caused by environmental carcinogens. Match factories, especially ones that used white phosphorus, were notorious for their dangerous working conditions. Children were used as matchstick makers, which involved the process of dipping matchsticks into a phosphorus solution, which created the striking surface. They would also be the ones to pack the matches into the boxes for distribution. Phosphorus fumes were highly toxic, causing a condition called fossy jaw. This was a disease that led to the swelling of the jawbone, resulting in severe disfigurement and death. As you can imagine, being in a matchstick maker factory also posed obvious fire hazards due to extremely flammable materials around the factory. There were many other industries that we could discuss, but the general idea is that the workplace during the Victorian period imposed severe risks. The demand for cheap labour subjected many children to the most dangerous jobs at the expense of their health, education and well-being. After long work hours, children would return to extremely dirty and unpleasant living conditions. Many lived in cramped housing where entire families lived out of single rooms with no ventilation or sanitation. The lack of clean water and disposal systems for waste led to outbreaks of diseases such as cholera, dysentery and typhoid. With some buildings not having adequate sewage systems, waste would accumulate in the streets and clean water was scarce. There was little access to fresh fruit and vegetables and most families lived off bread, potatoes and tea. The harsh conditions full of disease and illness coupled with the physical demands of their work results in a high death toll among child workers. Education for working children was a rare privilege. Many children had no access to education and those who did attend school did so sporadically because of the work commitments. Education also required fees for tuition, books and uniforms which most families couldn't afford and the contribution to household income took precedence over schooling costs. Sunday schools were originally founded to teach children about the Bible but they began to offer basic literacy and numeracy lessons which provided a rare opportunity for child workers to receive some form of education. The National Sunday School Union, which was established in 1803, played a significant role in expanding the access to education. Reformers played a key role in improving the welfare of child workers. Lord Shaftesbury, who was a social reformer, was an advocate for the welfare of child workers. He supported any legislation to reduce working hours and improve conditions which indirectly benefited children's educational opportunities. Robert Rakes is known as the founder of the Sunday School Movement, which aimed to provide education to working children. This laid the foundations for the educational reformations and increased the awareness around the importance of education. Ragged schools founded by John Pounds and supported by Lord Shaftesbury provided free education, food, clothing and shelter for children offering training to help them gain skills for better employment opportunities. With the help of those reformers, acts started to be brought in to try and protect children and in 1833 the Factory Act was introduced. This prohibited the employment of children under 9 years old in textile mills and it mandated education for working children. In 1842, the Mines Act was introduced which banned women and children from working underground. In 1844, an adjustment was made to the Factory Act which further restricted the working hours for children and improved safety regulations which was further improved in 1878. And in 1870, the Education Act was introduced where education was compulsory for children aged 5 to 10. As you can imagine, there was a lot of resistance from factory owners to these constant changes to legislation, removing the opportunity at times to employ cheap labourers and effectively decreasing their profit margins. Child labour from the Victorian period left a lasting impression on literature and culture. Authors, poets and artists used their works to shed light on the harsh realities faced by child workers. One of the most significant figures to address child labour was Charles Dickens, with novels such as Oliver Twist and David Copperfield, portraying the realities for poor working children. William Blake was another whose poem The Chimney Sweeper talks about the innocence of childhood and the grim reality of children being forced to work as chimney sweeps. While Victorian child labour may seem like a relic of the past, 
Unfortunately, there are still disturbing parallels that exist in modern times, with the ongoing challenge of child exploitation and the need for action. Conditions have clearly evolved since then, but the underlying issues of poverty, exploitation and the lack of opportunities still exists. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe to the channel for similar content and I'll see you soon.